Look at the search bar on a screen in August 2005, December 2017, and today. Each time, one simple word kept spiking. Housing, Bitcoin, and now artificial intelligence. Each time, that spike lined up almost perfectly with the moment the story turned. The signal showed early, long before the headlines admitted that the boom had become a trap. This time, the spike in AI interest is even higher. Watch what that really means. In August 2005, the housing search peak arrived just as prices quietly rolled over. In December 2017, Bitcoin searches peaked in the same month the price began an 80% slide. Now AI searches tower over both of those episodes. And in the background, one of the most famous crisis traders on the planet is openly betting against the new heroes of this boom. Mini Hook. One chart is quietly telling the whole story of this cycle. Check the cast of characters. A former housing crash short seller is now holding bearish options on Nvidia and Palantir, two of the purest AI narratives in public markets. At the same time, OpenAI still loss-making is valued around $500 billion after a secondary share sale. Tesla trades at a price-to-earnings ratio in the high 200s. Palantir's multiple has moved above 500 on some measures. Notice the pattern hiding inside those numbers. Prices are no longer just about chips, servers, and data centers. They are about belief in robots, autonomous fleets, and general intelligence that has not yet arrived. Expectation is starting to outrun cash flow in one very specific corner of the AI stack. That is where the story of prepare yourself really begins. Checkpoint one, so far the signal is hype at the top, leverage in the middle, and expectations at the bottom. Follow the money into the real economy. Since ChatGPT's launch, data center and semiconductor construction have turned into a giant capital expenditure wave, the AI CapEx cycle. A Harvard economist recently estimated that infrastructure tied to AI and data centers explained well over half of measured economic growth in the first half of 2025. Strip that out, and headline growth would have looked close to flat. In other words, one narrow investment boom is carrying a very wide economy. Picture a city where almost every new crane is building one kind of structure. Not apartments, not offices, just server farms. On paper, the skyline looks vibrant. Underneath, risk is concentrating in a single theme, like weight gathering on one side of a bridge. The structure still stands, right up until something shifts. Mini, mini hook. The strongest part of this boom may also be its weakest link. Look at how the AI universe splits into three layers. First, AI infrastructure, chips, networking gear, power-hungry data centers. Second, AI implementation, companies whose entire story is, we are AI, from robotic streams to data mining platforms and foundation models. Third, AI spenders, the mega platforms, from cloud giants to social networks, pouring tens of billions into this technology to protect their own core businesses. Those three layers do not carry the same risk. Result, the most visible winners are not necessarily the most fragile. Infrastructure names such as Nvidia, AMD and Oracle are expensive, with price to earnings ratios around 50 on average. But those valuations sit on top of real revenue and earnings explosions, helped by data center sales that have grown at double digit rates quarter after quarter. Spenders like Alphabet, Meta, and Microsoft sit close to 30 times earnings, lofty but nowhere near dot-com mania levels. The real bubble lives one layer above. Watch what happens in the implementation layer. Tesla's valuation now implies decades of flawless execution, not just as a car maker, but as a robo-taxi and humanoid robot leader. Palantir, priced at more than 400 times earnings, is treated less like an analytics vendor and more like a ticket to an AI-run future state. OpenAI sits at that 500 billion valuation while still burning large amounts of cash, with investors effectively prepaying for profits far into the future. This is what extreme expectations look like. Think of it like three different seats on a plane. Infrastructure sits in business class, expensive, but at least the seat is real and already reclined. Spenders sit in economy plus, cramped, but with a bit more room and a long flight record. Implementation sits in a section that has not been built yet, 
paid for on the promise that one day the airline will bolt it onto the back of the plane. Any turbulence hits that unfinished section first, mini hook. The first break in this story almost never starts where headlines expect it. So here is the core mechanism. Warning sign one, expectations breaking away from earnings. Implementation stocks now price in a future where AI solves everything, everywhere, fast. If those companies fail to deliver breakthrough cash flows on the promised timeline, the market does not need a crisis to reprice them. It just needs disappointment, quarter after quarter. In past bubbles, that slow disappointment was how the air began to leak out. Leave one open question hanging. When those implementation names stumble, do investors calmly rotate or do they stampede for the exit and then question the entire AI thesis? Check how that connects to the rest of the stack. Right now, NVIDIA's chips sit at the center of the frenzy, powering models for every major cloud and model provider. As of late 2025, NVIDIA alone explains close to a fifth of this year's S&P 500 gains, despite being just one company in a very large index. That concentration is not yet a bubble by itself, but it is a pressure point. If implementation budgets crack, AI capex cracks next. Checkpoint two, the signals showed early in implementation, the stress travels directly into infrastructure. Warning sign two, the AI capex cycle dominates growth when one investment theme becomes the main driver of GDP, earnings and index returns, the system becomes fragile to any pullback in that theme. Big tech spenders can delay projects, stretch replacement cycles, or push pricing harder in downturns. If that happens while implementation valuations are still priced for perfection, both the story and the numbers start to clash. That clash is how bubbles move from narrative to math. Imagine an oil boom town that builds roads, malls and schools on the assumption that the price of crude never falls. As long as the wells pump, everything looks fine. The moment prices slip, tax revenues sag, projects stall and the illusion of permanent growth fades. The AI capex cycle is today's digital version of that town. Prepare means recognising how much of today's earnings boom depends on that single flow of spending. Mini Ag Sunny Hook the system does not break where it looks wild. It breaks where everyone quietly agrees it is safe. Look backwards for a moment. In the late 1990s, the dot-com bubble was not just about silly websites. It was about telecom and fiber build-outs, massive capex justified by blue sky forecasts of internet traffic that never arrived. By 2002, less than a tiny slice of that network capacity was actually being used and entire business models collapsed. Investors had trusted a straight line extrapolation of early growth. Now the AI capex wave risks repeating that pattern with GPUs and data centers. Many forecasts assume training demand and inference workload scale in a straight line for a decade. If efficiency gains, competition, regulation, or simple saturation slow that path, the physical build out can flip from scarce to excess much faster than models suggest. That is the danger of staring only at the current quarter's revenue growth. Underneath, depreciation schedules, contract terms, and utilization rates may tell a different story. Checkpoint three, the system's strongest growth engine doubles as its most concentrated risk. Warning sign three, policy turns while the bubble is still inflating. In 2000, 2005, and 2017, the Federal Reserve was either tightening or holding policy high into the peaks of those bubbles. Higher rates slowly suffocated leverage making it more expensive to hold speculative positions. This time, the setup is different. The Fed is moving toward rate cuts again, with the next meeting scheduled for December 9th and 10th, 2025. At first glance, that sounds like a safety net. Cheaper money makes it easier to finance data centers, options trades, and long duration growth stories. But it also stretches the life of a bubble, allowing valuations to drift even further from cash flows before any real stress appears. When policy is easing, the break often arrives from a different direction. Earnings misses, balance sheet strain, or a sudden loss of belief. In that environment, preparation is about sequence, not prediction. Mini hook. If policy cuts into euphoria, the first big shock rarely looks like a classic rate hike crash. Now the countdown. Three dates sit on the calendar like pressure markers, 
the December FOMC decision, the late December inflation release, and the first wave of 2026 AI earnings. Each event updates one part of the story, the cost of money, the real value of cash flows, and whether AI earnings can keep up with the narrative. No single announcement decides the fate of a bubble, but each one nudges the system toward either soft landing or hard stop. That is why this script promised three warning signs, valuations, capex dependence, and policy timing. Checkpoint four. At this stage, the question is not crash or no crash. It is what breaks first and how far does the damage travel? Follow the money one level deeper into accounting. Short sellers like Burry have raised concerns that depreciation schedules on AI hardware may be too generous, stretching costs over five or six years for assets that might be economically obsolete in two or three. If that view is right, reported profits today are flattered at the expense of future write-downs. When write-downs arrive, they do not just hit earnings, they shake confidence in the entire story that justified the spending. Once again, the signal shows early in the footnotes, long before it appears in the headlines. Think of a building whose paint looks fresh while the steel quietly rusts. From the street, the structure shines. On the engineer's report, small cracks multiply across the beams. Investors usually stare at the paint. Preparing means learning to read the report. Mini hook. The quiet numbers in the footnotes often shout louder than the price chart. So what does prepare yourself really mean in a system level lens? It does not mean predicting the exact week and index peaks. It means understanding which parts of the AI complex rest on proven cash flows and which rest on stories that must go perfectly right. It means recognizing that implementation names with extreme price to earnings ratios are the first place air can leak out without destroying the entire economy. And it means watching how quickly a local shock in that layer changes the behavior of spenders and infrastructure builders. Leave one last open loop. If implementation cracks, do big tech platforms slow AI spending? Or do they treat the dip as a chance to double down and squeeze weaker rivals? Checkpoint five. At the end, preparation equals mapping transmission paths, not chasing headlines. Watch how the three warning signs line up as a simple dashboard. Implementation valuations tell whether belief is outrunning reality. AI capex share in GDP, and earnings tells how much the real economy leans on that belief. Policy, from rate cuts to regulation, decides how long the system can stretch before something snaps. Result? The search trend spike in AI is not destiny, but it is a signal. For housing in 2005 and Bitcoin in 2017, that signal arrived near the end of the party. This time, the Fed's easing path and the earnings of infrastructure giants could still extend the dance. Yet the same pattern remains, small cracks in expectations, then pressure on capex, then a broader rethink of risk. That is the path to watch. Scorecard line one, AI implementation valuation stretched, earnings still catching up. Scorecard line two, AI capex cycle now a core driver of growth and index returns. Scorecard line three, policy cuts by